Hello everybody, Cody McIntyre here from Boss Poses 3D and today we are going to be having a lot of fun with artificial intelligence. Now, before you all turn off the video and you're like, I don't want anything to do with AI, I don't want that to do my work for me, that's not the case today because there's two ways you can use artificial intelligence. You can use artificial intelligence to do work for you or you can use artificial intelligence to work with you. Now, this came up to me to make this video today based on a video I've seen from Corridor Crew, a very popular animation channel on YouTube. If you haven't seen their videos, please do go check them out because they make some incredible things. Things that have actually got me started making videos and animations today and in virtual effects because they are the kings of doing this. And they made a video about Stable Diffusion and they made like a Castlevania inspired one and it was incredible. But I'm going to be showing you guys that this technology has actually been around for a while so this is not an infant thing. You can do this today for completely free, very easily in Blender, okay? You can get every frame pretty much exactly the same. So you're going to need two things today. You are going to need the latest version of Blender, I believe that is 3.4. You're also going to be needing the add-on for Stable Diffusion, okay? So we're going to be doing uh, an animation, rendering that out. I'm going to show you how accurate that is. I'm going to show you again with another thing that we're going to record some actual footage from the real world and render that out in Stable Diffusion to see how accurate we can get that because I've been playing with it most of the morning today and I think I pretty much nailed it because you can do negative po uh, prompts, positive prompts, all within Blender already, right? And this is actually really cool. You might need pretty uh, pretty powerful GPUs. Some of these things can take a while to render, especially if we're uh, rendering these out to be very similar, right? It's gonna take a lot of steps, a lot of thinking to do. So I have a really good computer, so this would be good for the tutorial. So let's not waste any time today and go play with some AI robots, man. What a time to be alive this is. All right, now that we're back inside of Blender, we're gonna be rendering our scene in Stable Diffusion, and we're gonna be getting it as accurate as possible, as fast as possible. So, what I'm gonna be using is my Fixamo add-on right here just to make this stationary so we can loop it or combine this Mixamo animation with ease. You can get that on Blender Market at Boss Poses. You can get it from me at a discount on facebook.com slash bossposes3d, or you can pick it up on Gumroad. So now that you see that my animation is moving, I'm actually just going to go to my add-on up here, click fix, and now he's no longer moving. Now what I can actually do is just copy these keyframes and just paste them one after another. And now we have a looped Mixamo animation. That simple. Done. Okay, so now we're ready to move on. We're going to go to Rococo. We're going to go to retargeting. We're going to click uh, our source. We're going to click our Mixamo. And then we're going to click our target animation, or, or target armature, which will be our character. Build the bone list. Got the bone list. Now we're going to retarget animation button. Now we have a retargeted run animation for our stable diffusion render. So I'm going to bring our end frame down to 40. That way it only renders the 40 frames of that animation, okay? So next thing I'm going to do is find the camera. I have that set to my insert button on my numpad, so I can just do that. And I'll use walk and fly mode. I have that bound to my thumb button on my mouse, so I can use it like a first person shooter. And just kind of position the camera like this. And then now, we're ready to get into the stable diffusion part of rendering all of this. So what you want to do is after you install the stable diffusion add-on you can get for free or for free on, on blender market and then you want to come down all the way in your render settings to the bottom you'll see ai render the next thing you want to do is click uh, enable ai render you'll see all of these options right here now this is going to set the window size to your camera we can leave it default by setting it custom but just to make the animation fast just for the sake of people that do have low performing computers we're going to use a uh, lower resolution so we're going to be using the 768 you can choose whatever you want because it'll always come out pretty much the same method so now that we have that position we're just going to play our animation back as you see his head kind of click i'm just going to kind of like that i like that Perfect, okay, so we're gonna use that. And if you come down over at the side again, you're gonna notice you do have the prompt. You have a negative and a positive prompt, which is a bonus, but we're not actually gonna be using any of that for the tutorial. You're free to experiment with that at your own free will. But uh, what you're actually gonna do is click the picture. Now, you're gonna see a bunch of generated AI models that are for free for you to use. And if you hold uh, the up arrow at the top of the screen, it's very hard to see. But then you have actually a couple more you can use. So we're actually just going to find one that looks pretty simple. So we will use um, 
3D game. Why not 3D game? Right? Actually, you know what? We will actually just change that because it's kind of game-like already. So we're actually just going to find a new model. I'm going to go pencil drawing. We'll just do the pencil drawing to see how accurate we can get a pencil drawing. But now you're going to see uh, below that you have three options. You have an advanced operation and animation. We're going to be focusing on the animation and advanced option. So when you hit uh, animation, you're going to notice you have to set a path. This is where all of your frames are going to go. And this will be rendering them out as image frames, by the way. So make sure it's either an empty folder or a blank folder. So what I'm actually going to do is just set a path right now to my desktop. Just pick any folder for now because we can delete the images later after we render it as a video because we can do that in Blender also. You can also, if you're very advanced, use animation prompts and you can do this through scripting and all this fun stuff. So now you're pretty much ready to render your animation. But if you notice, if we go into our scene that it has no light or color or anything, this can become a very big problem for us. So there's actually a good add-on you can download for free as well. And it has uh, payment subscriptions as well to get more assets. It's called Blender Kit. Okay. I upload a lot of brushes to Blender Kit. They'll pop up at the top and you'll be able just to basically click and select one of these materials on whatever's highlighted and it'll just apply it, okay? So what we're actually gonna do is click HDRI and we're gonna find an HDRI and we're just gonna import that. I am rendering this in cycles, by the way. So you're gonna wait for the HDRI to, it is downloading in the background, so if it does hang up a little bit, that is okay. And there you go. Now that we have that set, we can turn the grain off again by going all the way to the top of where our, anim or our AI tab is, and then hitting the D noise under sampling. And now that you'll see that your viewport isn't as uh, fuzzy and blurry, it doesn't have a lot of noise on it, okay? But noise can make your renders a lot faster, so if you have to, leave that enabled. But for the sake of this, we're just gonna leave it off. And then uh, I'm gonna select my character, go into materials, again in the Blender Kit tab here. Sometimes it can take a minute to pop up. I'm going to click Categories, go down to Effects, and as you see, you have a bunch of effect materials, right? And these are really good, and as I said, whatever is highlighted and you click, we'll just apply it. And then we're just going to go up the character and just kind of get the head as well. Now if I back out into my camera view, you'll see that we kind of have a scene ready for stable diffusion right there, okay? So now we can go back over into where our AI tab is and we're going to open the advanced options tab, okay? To get the best image similarity, it's best to have it at 0.70. Just put 0.7, it'll automatically put it there and that's going to get it as close as possible. So this will take a little bit longer due to that being so high. So we're actually just going to right now hit the render animation button but if you want to speed this up even further you can enable wireframe in your uh, viewport that just makes everything just run a little bit better so the next thing i'm going to do now is just hit render animation and this will be 40 frames so always be set to the timeline length so i'm going to hit render animation and at the top you're going to see ai rendered frame 0 out of 40 0 percent so now we're just going to wait this sometimes locks up but it doesn't usually crash so just try not to click anything and it will render the image as long as it gets the first image in it usually starts going pretty quickly so we're just going to actually wait for this to start pumping out some images for us and i'm going to show you how accurate this can be kind of looks like rubber that's kind of cool now let's see if the second image is close to being like that Boom, almost exactly the same. It's pretty much exactly the same. We're looking for that rubbery look that it gave it. As you see, it's kind of trying to make it look like a human with its face. Like that's really, really interesting. In the background is what I was concerned with because when I was playing with this in the past, the background would always flicker and do different things, but this is actually extremely stable. And as you see, this is running a lot better than it should be. This is so accurate that you're, we're actually just animating in stable diffusion and everything's pretty much the same, right? So I'm just gonna pause up, wait for this to finish and show you what the final outcome looks like. Now, we are about halfway done through the animation. Everything is checking out really good, but there is one thing that you might want to take note of when doing this. 
is to leave the background transparent on your character that way it's just rendering your character as a stable diffusion and draw out your backgrounds that way the backgrounds aren't changing with the stable diffusion as well so you can actually render this out transparent background just the character and then just layer the hdri over the background in a separate clip we can do that another time as well when we do like a more uh vfx style so we'll probably do that with the realistic footage but uh for now this is actually looking really good so again i'm just going to come back when this is all finished and we're going to play it back and see what it looks like okay now that the animation is finished i think we hit the cap for the free amount of frames that we can render at one time i can't remember how that works i think you get a certain amount I, I, I honestly don't remember but we did get pretty damn close to the 40 frames if not all of them so what i'm actually going to do now is in Blender as well, you can click this little plus button up in your workspaces and add a video editing. So you can go here, video editing. And then what we're going to do from video editing, so I already have one open here. We're going to go to image, or sorry, add image sequence. And then we're going to find our sequence data that we just rendered out. So I got mine in a folder here, I'm just taking a moment. So we got 29 frames, which isn't too bad. It's not the full 40, but it's okay. And as you see, we have our animation now imported. And as you see, we got a full render and stable diffusion. And it is really damn accurate from being the same. So I can actually probably loop this. Just for video's sake. I can bring up the time. But as you see, the background is flickering. Now, if we rendered it without the background, we would just have the character, and the character is pretty much what we were after. But the stable diffusion renders very, very well. Like, that's damn accurate. And to think that we that is still a 0.10 off, so we could get even closer to being accurate if we wanted to. But this is recommended to be the best, and this is just one of the default AI models. So. Again, like, you can download your own AI models if you really wanted to, and then just use that. But now that we have the image sequence, we can render this out as an MP4, and then we have our stable diffusion render, right? So now that I have uh, all of this done here, I can actually go over into layout. I'm just going to stretch this up, go back into video editing, and as you see, we have that about this double the length, right? So we can render it like so. What I'm actually going to do is just bring this back. And then we can render just this clip out if we really wanted to. Or we can go into any other video editor and do that as well. But as you see, the stable diffusion does work for animation. So if you all like today's video, please do like and subscribe the video. And if you want the add-on, please do go over to Blender Market, facebook.com slash boss poses 3D, or on Gumroad slash boss poses. You can pick it up from me directly at a discount on Facebook, or you can go on uh, Gumroad and Blender Market and pick it up there as well. And there's plenty of tutorials on it. So please do check that out. Like and subscribe. Thank you all for tuning in today's video, and uh, happy animating. Later.